Hi, I'm Bobby Balicki from the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, better known as NEMA. Thanks to the U.S. Department of Energy, we are proud to present Bids for Grids, new media for the energy workforce. In partnership with George Mason University, Northern Virginia Community College, and NEMA members, we've developed a series of short educational videos introducing electrical equipment that's used in the smart grid, the electrical grid for the 21st century. This series is going to present a dozen of the most important products that are critical to a smart grid success. Our mission is simple, to make you more aware of smart grid technologies and help you consider a career in power engineering. This edition of Vids for Grids takes us to Aiken, South Carolina, where we will visit Hubble, who manufactures surge arresters, a vital part of the smart grid. And we're back here in Aiken, South Carolina, at Hubble Power Systems, where today we're gonna to learn about distribution arresters, ground lead disconnectors, and how they help improve the reliability of the smart grid. Uh, surge arresters are products that are used to protect uh, electric power equipment from voltage spikes either from uh, lightning or switching events on the system. The surge arresters that we produce here are very similar in function to uh, surge protectors that we're all familiar with in our house, for example. Uh, plugging a computer into a power strip with a surge protector. That surge protector has a metal oxide varistor element and the function of that is to provide a low resistance path to ground for lightning events and that low resistance path to ground then protects the equipment, in the case of the house, the computer, in the case of the power system, the transformer. Surge resters are extremely important to utilities because they are uh, the only line of defense that they have in protecting uh, equipment from voltage spikes. Even though today's metal oxide arresters are extremely reliable, the possibility exists that they could experience a failure. The failure mode of metal oxide type arresters is they fail shorted. If they fail shorted, the, uh, the power system would be locked out until a line crew could come out maybe several hours later and actually replace the shorted arrestor. The disconnector allows for a shorted product to be safely cleared from the line and immediately allow power to be restored. The, the advantages with the new style disconnector, which is much more reliable than earlier technologies, is that it will always disconnect a failed arrestor, which means that even though the grid will be interrupted for a short period of time, the outages will not be extended. The smart grid is really only as good as the overall system reliability. So power must be kept flowing to the, to the equipment and to the users. The failure rate, as a matter of fact, in, in five years of producing this product and, and millions of units in service, there has not been a single reported case where a failed arrestor did not properly disconnect itself from the, the system. If there's something that goes wrong with our product, then lightning might come through perhaps and strike your house, um, and there's no protection. An arrestor really provides uh, kind of like an insurance policy on your house or on your electrical equipment. So if it's not there, or something with that equipment fails or it wasn't built correctly, potentially we have a grid that fails, which may lead to other failures, which means that a hospital might not have power um, and an industry might not have power. Uh, we could have many buildings or many homes that were now in the dark or without power. I think that the quality assurance engineering plays a huge role in the, the manufacturing process. And that's because that we check the material when it comes in the door. It has to meet certain critical features to make sure that it is what we think it is and what the design engineers have intended it to be. And then what we do is we make sure that each uh, production step has that quality steps built into it. Just to make sure, again, that we're meeting that industry standard. We make sure that all the electrical tests are working. And then we go through and we check the products as they're going out the door too. The smallest detail being left out can be a, a huge issue. 
It could be a lot of rework. It could be something that we catch later. So you really are responsible for making sure that every step is done correctly. Fabrication methods that we use to ensure high quality here at Hubble include lean manufacturing concepts from the design stage all the way through uh, shipping of the product to the customer. The role that robotics plays here uh, is primarily in our electric testing areas uh, where it automatically loads and unloads parts and moves them from station to station. Changes that we've had in manufacturing here at Hubble uh, have gone from a very traditional assembly process from one person to the next and to the next where they are very isolated to using these lean uh, manufacturing concepts that we've made more of a cell, a manufacturing cell where people can work together, share job responsibilities. Um, if one is lagging behind, another one can step in and, and help out. So it's much more efficient. Think about the practical aspects of what you're learning uh, and uh, how can your ideas make things better. Um, not always what's in the textbook, but what's already in you, what's in your head, the good ideas that you already have in you. I did find it a lot easier to, to find a job with an engineering background because it differentiated me from the competition where um, the opportunities were a lot larger with an engineering degree. Um, you're not just limited to an engineering position. You can go into sales, um, marketing position, um, manufacturing, um, amongst many others. But what engineering prepares you for is more of a problem solving way of doing things. And so that's where within sales you have to, you have to help customers solve problems. And it kind of goes down the ranks to, to uh, manufacturing. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited with the, the advancement of Smart Grid and then wind power, which is another big upgrade. And so over time, we're going to have changes to the Smart Grid and improvements that uh, could be very exciting to a lot of young engineers wanting to get into some type of design. As our markets grow, we have a field sales team that's out there not only hitting the Latin American market, the Canadian market, the Asian market, but we're also developing Europe, Africa, and Middle East. Uh, there will be lots of opportunities for somebody to get involved, learn about our products and services, present those around the world, implement that, and gain valuable multicultural assignments, and help Hubble grow and grow as an individual within themselves. At Hubble Power Systems, we invest in our people through training and development and giving challenging opportunities. Additionally, we invest in our products and the market. We're developing new products. We're always improving our products. We're uncompromising in our ethics and integrity and in what we do to please our customers, to support the grid, to find new challenging ways, more effective ways, more cost-efficient ways to support our markets so that it's a win-win situation. It's better for the customer, it's better for Hubble, and it provides security for our employees. Our objective today was to learn a little bit about surge arresters, how they are made, how they operate, and how they protect other equipment in the electrical grid. We saw that these devices ensure reliability for the grid, both the transmission lines and the distribution feeders. As the smart grid becomes a reality, these surge arresters will become even more critical. From Aiken, South Carolina, and Hubble Power Systems, I'm Bobby Balicki.